Welcome to part eight of the video writing series for the SARS major course. I'm Mike Lemire. In this segment, we're going to continue with uh, some of the rules uh, for the American Psychological Association, the format, the style that we're expecting you to use for your writing assignments in the course. We're going to talk a little bit here about the reference page. Um, in the last segment, we went through citations, format for citations, the two different types of citations, um, and the different modes for citing uh, direct quotes. In this segment, we'll talk about how those items that you cite in your paper get listed on your references page. So the reference page format, again, you have the running head at the top in the margin, uh, in the header. There will be the title of your paper in all capital letters with the page number off in the far right margin. Again, if this is a five to seven page writing assignment, and I have six pages of essay, then page one is my title page, then in this case the reference page would be page eight, because I have a six page document, a title page, the references is page eight. Um, in this case, if this was a five page document, five page essay, um, then the references would be page seven of that particular document. <clears throat> So references is at the top of the page and center. Do not bold the word references. This is not a level one heading, so we do not place a bold font here. The key to the reference page in the format is that if you look down the left margin, you'll notice immediately there are four references or four sources listed on this document. And we notice that because we use a hanging indent. So that means line one of each source is to the left margin and any subsequent lines are indented a half inch. That helps the reader quickly identify the sources, not only how many there are, but because they're in alphabetical order, by author, I can quickly find the document that you cited earlier in your paper. So if you had a citation that was Underwood and Finley, 2004, I could immediately come back to your reference page and see what that document was. And that's really the purpose of listing the sources on the reference page so as a reader I can find that source document that you got that information from. <clears throat> now the first thing you need to ask yourself before you format the source on your reference page is what type of source is it? Books will be formatted one way, a journal article is formatted another, and a web page is formatted yet another way. Uh, so once you answer that question, what type of source is this? Did I go to the library and get a physical book? Did I go to a magazine and pull out an article? Did I go to a website and get a web page article for this? So once you identify that, then you, then you will know how to format the source on your reference document. Again, you will find plenty of examples on at the Purdue OWL website. So as you format the source on the references page, look at it in this way. You need to answer four questions and you need to put the answers to those four questions on the reference page. That's how you list your source. The first is the who. Who's the author of the document? Now the author may not always be an individual. It may be an organization. It may be a department. It may be an edited document where you list the editors and you identify them as editors um, as indicated at the Purdue Owl website. <clears throat> but you need to answer that question first because, because that's how you're going to begin the listing on your reference page with the who, who's the author. That piece of information will end with punctuation, in this case a period following the middle initial if it's an author, a period following the organization if it's the, federal, uh, uh, the Department of Defense for instance as your author, then Department of Defense will end in a period because the, each, uh, each of these four pieces of information will end with punctuation. That's what divides the four pieces of information in your source listing. So the next question you answer is when. When was this work published? Not when did you access the website, when did you retrieve the information, but when was it published? So you do all the research you can. Sometimes you have to be a private investigator to find the publication date. It's not always easy to find. But after you've done your due diligence and trying to find a publication date, if you can't find one, 
use the abbreviation for no date, N period, D period, inside the parentheses is the abbreviation for no date. <clears throat> so notice that in this case, in our example at the bottom, we're using a book that was published in 2010. The date goes in parentheses because this is how your citations are going to look throughout your paper. So your paper is going to, in your essay, when you cite this document, it's going to be Wetzel 2010 in parentheses every time you cite it. If it's, if it's parenthetical, it'll all be in parentheses. If it's in text, it'll be Wetzel in the sentence, 2010 in parentheses. Okay. The third piece of information is the what. What is the title of the work that you are referencing? The title of your source. Notice that when I referenced sentence case and title case earlier, that the title of a book, the title of an article, is going to be listed here in what we call sentence case, meaning the first word and proper nouns are the only things that get capitalized uh, in the reference listing. This is the only place you will do this. If you were to use the title of the book in the body of your essay, you would use title case. You would, you would uh, list it as, it's, as it is on the document. But for the purpose of your reference page, is the only place you will place titles in sentence case. Notice that this third piece of information also ends in a period or punctuation. If the title of the book ended in a question mark, that would be the punctuation to end the title of the book. And then finally, the fourth piece of information for formatting your sources is the location where it was published, is the where. Who, when, what, and where. Those are the four things you have to list, answer to list your uh, sources on the reference page. Now, in this case, this book was published in New York, New York by Greenwood Publishers. So you place the city, comma, followed by the two-letter abbreviations for the state with a colon after the state, followed by the title of the publishing company. And then that piece of information ends with a period. So New York, New York, Greenwood Publishers is all one piece of information. It's the where, and it ends with a period. The only change to this for your websites, if you are accessing information from the web, is you will still have an author, you'll still have a year, you'll still have a title of the web page, the article, the document that you access. But when you get to the where, instead of New York, New York, Greenwood Publishers, you will put retrieved from and then copy and paste the URL, the link to that particular source after the word from with a space. So retrieved from space HTTP colon URL for that, that link to that particular source. This is the only time you will not place punctuation at the end of one of those four pieces of information. Do not place a period at the end of a URL. Also do not allow the URL to be a hyperlink in your references. The uh, APA 6th edition clearly states no underlining, uh, no change in font colors on the reference page. When you have a hyperlink, it changes the font to blue, it underlines the URL. So just right click on it. If it does that, remove the hyperlink, it'll go back to being the right color font and it will not be underlined. So the only difference then for websites is piece four of the information becomes retrieved from with the URL. I'm not going to get into retrieval dates here. Um, they are used less and less in APA. Uh, retrieved, for instance, re retrieved July 23rd, 2016 from URL. Uh, the only reason we use retrieval dates in that fourth piece of information is when you know that that information, that source, is regularly updated, and the information that um, that is on there that you get that you gather may change a week from now, a month from now, six months from now. It's not a static document. It's not static information. It's something that's constantly updated. One of the examples that the APA Style Blog references is, for instance, medical websites. If I'm writing a paper on the treatment for a particular disease, uh, the treatment may be different a year from now than it is today. And it's a WebMD site, for instance, that is updated regularly. 
Then I would use a retrieval date because I want to let the reader know that as of the date that I accessed the website, that was the information that was out there. Um, and it allows the reader to know that that information may have changed uh, subsequently. <clears throat> so keep that in mind. Um, now, if you use retrieval dates for every website you access, just because you like to do it, you're in the habit of doing it, it's not wrong. We're not going to um, beat you up for that. But just know that it's not necessary unless the information that you know that you uh, accessed may change between the time you submit your paper and the time the instructor uh, looks up your references. Some additional rules uh, for um, references. <clears throat> Again, the hanging indent is used so that you can differentiate between sources on the document. Uh, makes it easier to read. Uh, it makes it easier for the reader to look up, look down the list of authors. I don't have to try to figure out where each uh, source begins. It's clearly identified because line one is left aligned and subsequent lines are indented. Do not use professional titles or credentials on the reference page. So for instance, if I'm using uh, General McMaster's book, Dereliction of Duty as a source for my history paper on Vietnam, um, I would not put McMaster comma H period R period general. I would not use his rank or credential professional title on the reference page. Now in the paper I can refer to him as General McMaster in his book stated. That's fine, but for the purpose of your reference document it'll just be McMaster comma H period space R period space your publication. All right. <clears throat> if it's a book or a journal title then you will italicize the title. If it's a article within a journal or within a periodical, the articles or the chapters of books do not get italicized. So a general rule of thumb is the, the document itself, the title of the document, if it's Time Magazine, USA Today, Encyclopedia Britannica, or Dereliction of Duty, um, those titles get italicized. If it's an item within the document, if it's an article in the USA Today, an article in the Time Magazine, or a chapter in Dereliction of Duty that I'm using as my source, those internal or those subtitles do not get italicized. So the article title, the chapter titles do not, the book titles and magazine titles do. <clears throat> All right, we've covered most of that. Let's get into plagiarism and quoted material. Um, two different topics, but they, they tend to get uh, confused, so we'll try to address them both um, and, and show you the differentiation that we're talking about here. Plagiarism is plagiarism whether it's intended or unintentional. If you copy somebody else's work and don't give them credit for it, whether you meant to or not, it's plagiarism. Um, so ignorance of the law is no excuse. Uh, that's why we spend so much time emphasizing it here and I'll give you an example uh, Stephen Ambrose famous author wrote a lot of history books uh, was vehemently accused of plagiarism uh, in, in at least one if not several of his books and the indication of plagiarism that people were harping on was that he used information from another book put a notation in there with the author's name that that information came from at the bottom of the page. So he was using a notation way to identify that that material came from another source. However, it was a direct quote and he failed to put quotation marks around it. So the failure to use quotation marks in the literary community was plagiarism, plain and simple. 